Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the future of our sun. And specifically we're going to be talking about a relatively recent research that seems to have established what exactly will happen to our own sun in approximately 5 billion years from now. Well, welcome to What The Math and let's find out. So, as you can probably tell from the title and also from what I'm doing here right now and where we are, this is kind of what our sun will probably look like in the future. Although not exactly to this kind of extent and also not exactly this color. What we're looking at is Orion Nebula. And the word here that we're looking for is of course Nebula. Nebula is a very interesting phenomenon and for the most part, what you kind of have to know uh, about it for this video is that it usually is formed two different ways. Either because of a supernova or, uh, more commonly, because of what's known as a planetary nebula. This is actually a misnomer, it's not a correct term, because it has nothing to do with planets. It's just something that stuck to astronomy since early mistakes of astronomy. Uh, planetary nebula are actually formed uh, from stars as well, and specifically from stars uh, that are about uh, mass of our sun to about three masses of our sun. And what happens to those stars when they get older is essentially, well, let's, let's take a look at it for a second. Here is Universe Sandbox and here's our sun. Over time, as our sun gets older and older and older, it's going to start growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And at some point, it's going to expand to the point where it's going to become, um, well, really, really large. It's going to become what's known as a uh, red giant. And we're going to try to simulate this here by locking some of the parameters and basically expanding our sun until it becomes really, really large. And as you may have heard about this from previous videos, or as you probably know from somewhere else, at some point our sun will probably engulf even Earth. It will definitely swallow uh, Mercury and Venus, and will probably come to the edge of Earth orbit. So whether Earth is doomed or not is not really well established yet. Um, but basically what's happening here is that sun just kind of grows in size and decreases in density and becomes this kind of enormous, enormous blob of uh, plasma. It's not really spherical, it's just kind of all over the place, although it does appear spherical here. And its mass doesn't actually increase, but it does decrease, because as it grows more unstable, it actually starts spewing out a lot of the matter into space. So it actually starts kind of pulsating. Now it's kind of hard to simulate this here, but imagine if it suddenly kind of increased and then started decreasing in size again. So it starts pulsating and because it pulsates, it starts releasing a lot of uh, external matter here, which we can actually simulate by basically throwing off a few of the particles here at relatively similar velocity where um, they would be in real life. And so here, okay, this is a little bit too fast, I guess. Let's decrease the speed here and try this again. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but there they are. They're sort of coming off our sun right now. And basically, uh, this will be happening for thousands of years. Uh, now, they didn't all come out from the sun, unfortunately, but this is kind of a simulation of what is going to be happening in about 4.5 billion years. And so this matter will actually start expanding, and this gas is going to spread across very, very, very wide areas of space. Now, it's not going to be visible just yet, because our sun doesn't really do anything to this gas. It doesn't really influence it in any way. Uh, but as the time goes by, at some point, our sun will actually lose most of the external shell. And what's going to happen on the inside, its core is actually going to start collapsing and becoming more and more dense and more and more hot. As a matter of fact, this heating effect is actually what is really, really crucial here. 
with smaller stars, the heating effect is not too extreme, and those stars, when they actually uh, turn into white dwarfs eventually, they're not as hot as our sun. And our sun is going to become a very, very hot white dwarf. And this is actually what makes this particular research from 2018 uh, somewhat different from the research before. And specifically, the uh, study called Mysterious Age Invariance of the Cutoff of the Planetary Nebula Luminosity Function by Christoph Gizitsky, an astrophysicist from uh, Nicholas Copernicus University, discovered that it's really the mass of our sun where you kind of can establish a cutout cut point for these planetary nebula. In other words, anything less massive than our sun will most likely produce a planetary nebula that's going to be invisible. But in case of our sun, in about 5 billion years, it, it is at some point going to create a somewhat easily visible nebula, a planetary nebula specifically. So. It's going to turn into white dwarf, and we're going to try to simulate what all of this is going to look like by basically exploding our sun. So we're going to create a supernova here, which is maybe not as realistic, but we have no choice. So there is that uh, white dwarf in the middle, and basically this will be a representation of a supernova. Um, or in this case, it's just a planetary nebula. And so all of this material as soon as the sun becomes white dwarf, suddenly lights up. And this is actually where it gets really interesting. Until the sun becomes a hot uh, white dwarf, nothing really happens. You don't really see anything. But as soon as our sun becomes uh, a very, very high, hot white dwarf with temperatures of over 30,000 degrees Kelvin, this is when suddenly you get to see something that would resemble cat's eye nebula which is actually one of the most famous planetary nebula you suddenly get this and all of this is created and formed by the white dwarf extremely extremely hot white dwarf right in the middle this white dwarf produces so much ultraviolet radiation uh, and you basically uv light that because of this ultraviolet radiation that pretty much is most of the radiation that the white dwarf produces, the entire gas shell around it lights up and starts emitting different colors of light. For every star, this color of light will be different, mostly because of different amount of UV light produced and also a lot of other um, factors such as the actual material that was released prior. Uh, but overall, it will usually look something like this. It will be absolutely magnificent, extremely beautiful, and we'll have this distinct uh, shape as well that is slightly different uh, from a typical supernova that's usually a lot less structured. Now, there's quite a lot of famous uh, planetary nebula, and all of them are actually quite uh, dramatic in their appearance and very, very, very beautiful. But I guess Cat's Eye is one of the most famous ones. There are, are a few other ones, such as, for example, NGC 7662, which also kind of looks relatively similar. And uh, I guess one of the most famous ones is this one right here, the Dumbbell Nebula, also known as M27 uh, or Messier 27, discovered by the French astronomer back in the days. Um, back in 1784, as a matter of fact, before we even knew what these were. And uh, so these nebula are essentially the future of our sun. Now, the more massive the star, until it kind of reaches the point where it, where it goes supernova, uh, the more brilliant and the more beautiful the planetary nebula it produces. And anything below one mass of the sun will still have the actual envelope around it, but it's actually not going to make it so vibrant. As a matter of fact, the nebula will most likely be almost completely invisible. So had our sun been a little bit less massive in size, it would actually produce something that would look like this. This is why I decided to create this here, because it's not a very uh, easily visible uh, planetary nebula, and it's also not very vibrant. This would be something that would be created by anything with 90% of mass of our sun or less. Uh, until, of course, you reach the point of red dwarfs, which don't even undergo through this kind of a change. But when it comes to our own sun, this is probably what it's going to look like. Here's actually what all of this may look like from our neighbor Alpha Centauri. It's going to be this relatively brilliant, very, very beautiful uh, planetary nebula that's at some point going to even engulf this area. 
but obviously all of this is just dust and the leftover material from the envelope or of our sun that's being irradiated by the ultraviolet light coming from the white dwarf that's right there in the middle. What happens to our own Earth is not really well known just yet, but it's possible that it's somewhere in there in the middle, changed completely by all of this uh, dramatic transformation. It might still actually even have some sort of a uh, uh, life on, on the surface, although this life would be hidden beneath the ice shells, because by then Earth will become a super cold world, since the sun does, doesn't really produce any uh, or enough heat anymore. So all in all, this is the most likely final stages of our sun before the last few stages that our sun will undergo before it becomes a white dwarf and then eventually changes into a black dwarf. In other words, we now are almost certain that it does become a planetary nebula, meaning that it's going to be a very, very beautiful sight. And so this is actually something that we expect our sun to look like one day. And maybe just maybe one day your children or I guess your uh, progeny, billions of years in the future, will get to observe all of this from a nearby star on a nearby planet that would colonize in the future. Anyway, so now hopefully you know what will happen to our sun in a little bit more detail and you can kind of imagine what all of this will look like in the night sky. Thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, and if you did, subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.